Hi, Chow. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah. Thanks for having me. I mean, we know, of course, Bautre for many years now. I had one of your colleagues in our first quarter of the Bachelor MBA. Mm -hmm. So it's been really good to have you here and to see it live. So maybe if we can start maybe introducing Bautre a bit and yeah. what it's all about. Thank you. Yeah, Bautre is a solution provider for lithium ion battery recycling. So we're working for different separation, purification to make the waste to resource and then to the materials. So we work with different partners in different countries, including like the Asia and North America, and also of course for the European market. Yeah, so we try to contribute our knowledge, our research results to the renewable world. Great, and as you mentioned solution provider, so the difference rather than saying you're one company now trying to build your technology in all of your plans, you're thinking more about developing technology and share with others. That's yeah, great. yes. So now we are facing so many different battery chemistry mm. for the AMO, AMC, NCA, LFP, and the sodium ion, and the more battery chemistry is coming. And in different countries have very different battery regulation and also for the environmental requirements. So I think for us, it's, I think everyone is very impossible to building up a network in everywhere in the world for recycling. Mm. But I think we could share our knowledge and experience everywhere. So that's for our position. So we are not recyclers, so we are the solution research and providers. And where do you hear now like the most interest? You mentioned a couple of different chemistries, LFP, NMC of course, and maybe people sodium iron. What's kind of coming on your table right now? It keeps you busy. Yeah, so you know, so for us, for the like our business, cash flow business, so we focus on the mainstream battery chemistry. So now it's more for the MC, NCA, battery for the recycling. And from last year, we are beginning our commercial and knowledge transformation from the LFP. Yeah, for the LFP, actually, is a new one in most countries for recycling. Even these already installed like four years ago. And they were also distributed very different. Like in the Asia market in China, last year for the installation, over 60% is LFP. But outside China, yeah, it's only less than 5%. Yeah, so the, for the recycling market, it's also very different everywhere. So this is why we research for different solutions in different regions yeah, for different purposes. Great. Let's do a tour. I mean, we're here, so that's great. We're here in China. So we can do a bit of a tour and we take the camera with us. So please join us. Um, and I appreciate it's after hours. So I know people are supposed to finish working. <laughs> so there's still people, a few people around. And now I think the first step, we want to go to the lab uh -huh. and hear a bit more about the technology itself because I think a lot of our audience is very interested also in understanding technology, learning about that. So I think it's not too far, so we're going to do a bit of a quick yeah. walk down the hall here. Yeah, we have different organic compounds, different metals. Yeah, yeah so that's really how we make the separation. Yeah. That's great, and I think there's some great visuals here. Um, we're going to take on some coats because I'll probably take someone else's, but I hope it's going to be okay to fit. Okay, great. So, I mean, this brings me back to my grad days of my <laughs> PhD, of, of doing my PhD research. So the microphone is probably now a bit funny, but okay, let's, let's have a look here. So what do we see here, Joe? Yeah, so this is a laboratory for the separation. Actually, we didn't do the shredding in the laboratory because they need more standardized and the much more bigger scale for the standardized feedstock. And then we, after we get black mass in the pyrrhot line, we'll have another demonstration line for, the, for uh, black mass reading. Then we go for the leaching here. Then we have different solutions. So this is a solution containing nickel, cobalt, manganese, lithium together. So in this lab, we are research for different uh, ways to separate nickel, cobalt, manganese, and lithium. And uh, some of our partners, they only want to separate the lithium and remain listen to the listen products and they keep nickel, cobalt, manganese co-extraction and they directly go to making the PCAM. So our different partners, they have different technical demands and we're working for different solutions for them here. Perfect. I think you probably want to uncover our microphone a bit. Okay. So that's perfect. Awesome. <laughs> that's great. So now we can see here a bit and if you maybe just go around here, a bit of a quick look because this looks pretty fancy. If you maybe yeah. can explain us what that is. Yeah, this is a very uh, typical solvent extraction. So we call it a liquid, liquid solvent extraction. So we use in the organic compounds as the extractor. So they can, have, like we can see in the below one, is the acro solution. 
they contain in different the metal inside, nickel, cobalt, manganese, and the lithium. And we will extract nickel, cobalt, manganese, and in different stage of the solvent extraction. And you can see in different stages, they have different color. So like in the end of solvent extraction, in the across solution is no, like the nickel, cobalt color inside. So most of the nickel, cobalt is in the, in the organic phase. Mm -hmm. So this makes the separation yeah, very well. And we keep the lithium in the aqueous solution and they will be recovered afterwards. And we have another solution we can extract the lithium before the solvent extraction. So we also call it pre lithium So based on the solvent extraction, we can design different solutions for different feedstock and for different uh, for products. So for this one, we can generate a battery grade nickel cobalt solution and they could directly go for the PKM manufacturing. Maybe for, I don't know if you know, but for battery chemistry enthusiasts out there, do you know what the color each represents? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can see the green one is more from the nickel. Mm -hmm. And if you see the pink one, it's for the cobalt. Mm -hmm. And the manganese is more like the dark the color, so like purple and different things. When they mix together, it's more like black. And because the concentration is very high. And what about the lithium? You just mentioned the stays in solution. Mm -hmm. Now we hear a lot of you know, interest in lithium in Europe as well, um, from the EU battery regulation. I just heard about there's a startup in Germany where they announced they now could you know, recycle lithium the first time in yeah. Europe. And yeah. maybe not battery grade yet, that's another question. But um, so I'm just curious, what's, what's the story with lithium? What can we do there? What can you do there? Yeah, so for the nickel cobalt solvent extraction and for refining is not a new story. And for when they, for the recycling, the biggest difference is we have lithium inside. Mm -hmm. So we have different uh, solutions. So one we get, as you mentioned, we get the lithium first before the refining. And then we can also recover the lithium afterwards, after we get nickel cobalt refining. So for the conventional solvent extraction, actually you will make some loss for the lithium when we do for the solvent injection. So we have another way for, for this one, like this one, this is a Nova V. So we can get the lithium to have nearly zero loss when we get the nickel cobalt yeah, extraction. And as you mentioned, before we get the nickel cobalt solvent injection to get the lithium recovery, maybe it's the better way, especially in, in Europe. Yeah. Mm, very good. So you're saying kind of essentially we can do now almost 100% lithium extraction with these processes? Yeah. For the nickel cobalt, for this one, it's over 99%. Mm -hmm. And for the lithium, it's depending on the loss. Mm -hmm. Someone will be going to the nickel solution, and someone is stay in the, in the, in the stay in the raffinate. Mm -hmm. So the raffinate will go for the lithium carbonate, and we will get some loss in the mother nickel. And, some, and actually, for the mother nickel, they can also go another recycling solution. So but this is a longer process. In ballpark, roughly, you mentioned there's 99%. Lithium, are we talking 80%, 70%? Lithium is loss, yeah. 50? Very less. Very less, okay. Yeah. So now for the Asian market, the lithium recovery rate is around 90%. Nine, zero. Yeah, nine zero. Nine zero. That's pretty high. Yeah. 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 Okay. And this is also depending on different regions. Yeah. So we didn't recommend that very high recovery rate in everywhere. Mm. Because the energy consumption, the it's labor high. cost is different. Mm. So after 85%, when we go to the 90%, you will need to pay more for CAPEX and OPEX. Mm. So we are not only making the, like, the ESG sustainability concern, it's also for the economic one. Mm. So we'll make a trade-off for that. Because I think that's a big point, right? We see it again from a regulation perspective, that there's requirement from 31, 2031 yeah. Europe that you have to use recycled lithium in your new batteries yes. in Europe. But again, what's the you know, financial case? And we get a lot of questions from especially automotive companies. What will be the lithium price of recycled lithium? Because again, you might can do it technology-wise, but is it economical and how much extra would you cost or will yeah. it be cheaper? Who knows, right? So I think that's really exciting to see that you were yeah. developing this talk. Yeah, for us, solution designer, we also think this is an impossible triangle. Mm -hmm. So for the car packs, all packs, and that's what was uh, like the environmental. Yeah. So someone will be job, you know, one factor. Mm -hmm. So in some countries, maybe there's no automatic, and but they will have lower car packs and the all packs. Yeah. And like in, in the, European markets, we know the labor cost is higher, so automation is a must. So the capex may be a bit higher, but we'll get lower opex. Mm. So we, in different regions, different solutions, we will adjust the triangles. 
it's similar to optimizing a battery, right? Which we're also trying to yes, optimize yeah. for safety and everything and energy density and costs and it's, it's difficult, right? So yeah. it's, as you said, it's the magic triangle. This is a lot of different solutions mm. from different uh, factories. Mm. So they are from like different battery chemistry. So actually the nickel cobalt solution is like the, the chemicals in hazardous. So we will be treating them here to get battery grid products and they will be synthesize them here as a materials. So you're actually doing, you're going to battery grade. So when you yeah. recycle material, you want to yeah. go back to battery grade? Yeah, and we're also making new battery materials and making them less uh, new battery cells. So we test uh, some of the recycled uh, battery materials. Some of them from the direct recycling. Mm. So we can see some of like the powder, the cathodes, anodes, mm. and you can see some of the cathode from the foils. Mm. Yeah. And after we regenerate and repel the battery, so we can make them as uh, new cells using the recycling content. So they are testing in different circles. Yeah. That so reminds me of my PhD days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the same. Okay. Yeah, this is for this one it's more like a material size. Yeah. But that's why it's more like a chemical engineering. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. But that's really I think that's a big drive now, right? Because I think the first step was it's about recycling and you don't have to go to better grade. I mean lithium can also be used in different applications, right? Like soles and glasses and all kinds of different things. Um, but that you actually go to battery grade, I think that's the holy grail, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's of interest. Awesome. Okay, I think now maybe next we can go to see a bit of a bigger picture mm -hmm. of kind of how these setups are working and what's like the vision. I guess this is similar. Yeah, there are different lines different for lines. different uh, feedstock. Yeah. So some white high nickel and some white is from LCO, only cobalt. And also some white is mixed. So we also now get some very complicated feedstock. We mix the MC and LMO mm -hmm. together. Yeah. I heard that it's getting more popular to mix things, yeah, which is, I guess, in your world, another challenge to, to look into. Yeah. yeah, for us, we not only recycle for the end-of-life battery. Some of the manufacturing scraps, they are using the very new, newest materials yeah. and newest recipes is also need to recycle here. Very good. So now we're going to go right here, I think. I yeah. see a bit of fun over here. Okay, that's a Easter egg. So let's see who's going <laughs> to... I think I'm going to fail terribly, but you go first. <laughs> Oh wow, okay, you can see who's spending more. Okay, no, I'm not team trying. <laughs> who's spending more time here, that's good. Um, okay, so let's walk here into the kind of final step. Um, I mean, it's a cool office. It's very modern. Well done, you guys. Um, so I think now we can talk a bit about um, this, which I think looks quite intriguing. If you can maybe also walk us through what we're seeing here. Yeah, so for this one, it's more, we will have demonstrates for the whole supply chain. Like from the very beginning, you can see, we can, maybe we can show you some of the virgin raw materials there. Yeah. So you know, I worked for the refining and also for the PKM industry in the past uh, decades. So I was familiar for this one. So like this is from Africa, this is the cobalt. Yeah. And this is also from Africa, this is for the cobalt. Yeah. The iron, fluorine, and this is silicon. Yeah, so all these virgin raw materials, they will go for refining. Mm -hmm. And then we get the nickel, cobalt, like the lithium carbonates. Maybe you can show to people because not everyone knows the colors and how it all looks. You know, it's nice to see, I think. Yeah, so this is the, like the yeah, nickel surface, mm -hmm. the battery grid one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually we mix the, some of the recycling content inside mm -hmm. yeah, to make them fit for the battery regulation. I was just saying, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're reading my mind, very good. Yeah, <laughs> and this is for the cobalt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is more like the pink one. Yeah. And this is the leasing carbonates. Mm -hmm. So this is from, and this is manganese, yeah. So all this one is from the, like the, from the secondary source and the virgin raw materials. And this is black mass. Yep. Yeah, so you can see, we can see a lot of like the polymers still inside. Yep. So this is a spent battery like a cell. Yeah. And this is some of the foils. We can direct recycling from the scraps. Yes. So we can regenerate some of the aluminum and the copper foils. And for this one, if we go for the battery manufacturing, they will go to the EV. Yep. After the end of life, they will go for retired. So the recycling is very important. In the blue one, is uh, like a demonstration for demos, uh, dem dismantling, shredding, and also leaching, soil injection, and they were remade for the battery grade materials. So making the closed loop. So this is why we think the recycling is very important. 
And actually, if we can use more recycling contents, we yeah. can minimize for the consumption for the virgin raw materials. And if the mod business model will be go further, so the closed loop will be, will be shorter. Mm -hmm. So I would think that maybe the best way is from the cell makers, recyclers, they can go the very short, yeah, the closed loop. So because for some of one individuals buy the EV, so they need a lot of time and the cost to collect the spent battery from different individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why we are also working with IEA in the National Energy Agency for batteries web. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you someone owns the battery in whole and yeah. they're making the lease, it's more like a car leasing, mm -hmm. we can go for the battery leasing. And the one on the battery, they will go recycling themselves. Fascinating. Maybe as a final question, kind of what do you wish other people would know? I mean, you have been now in this space for quite some time and both for about five years, but even before. So maybe what are things you wish that other people would be aware of? Maybe in Europe, the US, any other region mm -hmm. from your Chinese perspective, maybe as well? Yeah, you know, we are working in different country for different uh, battery chemistry for the spent battery. And we're making the battery grids the chemicals and the even for the battery materials recovery. So we found this is very interesting. You know, we have very different battery structure design. The cylinder one, the punch one, the prismatic one, and we have different battery chemistry. Yeah. So even the same of the spent battery, when they get the recycled contents, they will have different cutbacks, opacks, and very different carbon footprint. Yeah. So I think this is very important to based on our knowledge, our experience, we can provide more information for the battery design. So if we can get more standardized design and they can made in bigger capacity for the manufacturing and the recycling, we have much more lower carbon footprint emission. Fantastic. I mean, as someone who runs a company who is a knowledge partner for many other companies, I can very much appreciate what you're doing. I think it's really important to bring knowledge to organizations and enable them right, for this important step. And I think we can see more and more awareness also in Europe, Asia, but also North America about how important recycling is, but also how challenging is it. Right? We have yeah. seen a bunch of projects which had issues for all kinds of reasons. It's not that easy, yeah. I think, but um, I think it's very exciting what you're doing here and uh, the technology you're building. So really appreciate you taking your time out. I know it's after hours again. Thanks so much for having us here near, not Thank too far from much. Shanghai in China. And they are really good to see it in person. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so from far from Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I no, really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. And yeah, if you're interested in more of these kind of episodes, please let us know maybe in the comments or reach out to us. We'd love to see more. I think it's really exciting to see things firsthand. So again, thank you all so much for listening in today and watching. And see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.